Hey guys, it's Libby and today I'm here to talk about meal processing and eating disorder recovery. So if you're wondering what meal processing is, basically in eating disorder recovery, no matter what eating disorder you faced, whether you overate, whether you underate, whether you purged, whether you ate very specific things, whatever, you have an un healthy, a non-normal relationship with food. So in order to recover, obviously you need to normalize that relationship that you have with food. And whether you underate, overate, whatever, that's gonna look a little bit different for every person to help them get back to a normal sort of state um, as far as their relationship with food. So when recovering, anybody can just shovel food down their throat, say, yep, thumbs up, I ate the food, check, on to the next thing, I'm recovered. You know, like, anybody can do that, but does that mean that your thought processes have changed as well? Does that mean that your emotions have changed as well? Probably not. Probably just shoveling food down your throat isn't going to change those things. So you can actually go about trying to change those things, your thoughts, your behaviors, your emotions, etc., by processing them, by reflecting on them after your meal, after your snack, whatever. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk to you about meal processing. It can be a super quick, easy, one minute, quick, whatever thingy that you just do and you can just move on with your day. Like it's not like you gotta sit down and write a four page essay about how the meal went, you know, like, it's quick, it's simple, but it's worth it to do. I promise you it is worth it to do when you're recovering from an eating disorder. So that said, let us move into what meal processing could look like. I also just want to add that this video is not just for people who are struggling with an eating disorder. If you know somebody who's dealing with an eating disorder, it's good for you to know what it's like to process a meal. It's good for you to know the kind of things that it's important to think about while recovering and while processing a meal. So if you are not dealing with an eating disorder, but you know somebody who is, maybe you can bring this video to them. Maybe it could help them. Maybe you can just internalize these questions, these tactics, and then bring it to them yourself, you know? So yeah, but this is not just for people with eating disorders. This is for people who want to help people with eating disorders as well. So meal processing can look a bunch of different ways. There are a bunch of different things you can talk about, a bunch of different things you can reflect on, but I'm just gonna speak from my experience. I um, had a brief stay at the Eating Recovery Center in Ohio. They have a bunch of different locations. I don't know if they all do it the same or if they do it differently, I don't know. But I'm gonna reflect on my experience at the Eating Recovery Center in Ohio and um, yeah. So basically with meal processing, this is something you can do all by yourself, just alone in your head. You could write it out if that helps you. You could do it with a peer who is struggling with an eating disorder as well. You could both reflect on your experiences together. You could do it with somebody who isn't even having an eating disorder. You could do it with like a trusted adult, like a parent. You could do it with a sibling. You could do it with a best friend. You could do it with a significant other. You can do it with anybody that you feel comfortable sharing these things with. So in processing a meal, like I said, this is not a long process. Well, it can be. If you'd like it to be a long drawn out thing, it totally can be, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a very quick, brief thing. So the first thing we would talk about is a success. And usually we say that in one or two words, no big deal, move on to the next thing. So an example of a success in a meal would be completion. So say you ate your entire plate of food that you were supposed to eat, woo woo, completion. Say you ate half of it and then you finished up with like a boost drink because you weren't able to finish the plated meal, so you finished with a supplement drink. Woo, -woo completion. So um, completion can look a couple of different ways. There's nothing wrong with that. You complete it, you complete it, woo woo, completion. So completion is one success. Say you didn't complete the plated meal and you didn't complete the supplement drink. Did you eat anything? Yeah, yeah you did, you did. That's a partial completion. That is a, I tried my best. That is a success. Success isn't always perfection. You're not looking for perfection, okay? So you still had a success. Even if you don't complete a meal, you succeeded. Say you ate nothing. Did you fight your thoughts really hard? Did you mentally like try to kill it and just do it and you know like, did you try? That is a success. 
you are doing your best. Another type of success you could do would be to have eaten a fear food. So like breakfasts and snacks, we chose our own things at the recovery center. Like we choose what we ate for breakfast, we choose what we ate for a snack. And so if you chose something that is a fear food of yours to eat, that is a success. That's a big success. You chose something that scared you. Like, that's amazing. Like, you are so strong and amazing. That is a success. There are tons of other types of successes out there. I can't go through the whole list. That is too long of a list. Um, but those are a couple things to kind of get your, your brain juices flowing so you can kind of think what other successes could be. Um, the next thing that we would say was a challenge we had. So some examples of that would be taste preference. So something they were really big on was saying you don't want to yuck somebody's yum is what they would say. So imagine you are somebody and you had this weird chicken for dinner and you didn't like it and it was gross. You don't want to say, oh, the, my challenge today was the chicken was so gross. Like, then another person who like, say, say you're like around people with eating disorders. So say you said that, then the person with an eating disorder who did like it is probably gonna start hating themselves. You know, they're gonna be like, wow, they thought that was so gross, but I liked it. What's wrong with me? Oh, I'm such a pig, cause I liked it. You know what I mean? So you never wanna yuck somebody's yum. yum. And that's a bigger deal when you're talking about talking to somebody with an eating disorder, but still, it's, no matter what, you don't want to yuck somebody's yum. Somebody paired that food to be delicious and you don't want to yuck it. So if you just say taste preference, no big deal. It just wasn't your taste preference. It wasn't what you prefer to eat. Okay, no big deal. Um, another type of challenge you could have would be volume. So say you've got like a meal plan that you're following and you like plate up all your food and it looks like a lot and the volume is a lot. Eating all of it could be difficult, like physically uncomfortable, you know? Like you could be really, f I just choked on myself again. Um, you could be really full and your stomach could hurt a little bit and stuff, you know? And so that's what a volume type of challenge would look like. Another type of challenge could be unhealthy urges. So whether that's the urge to purge, urge to exercise, urge to restrict, whatever. You might be having those thoughts, those feelings, those desires to have those poor behaviors. So that could be a challenge that you're facing in your um, meal. The next thing we talked about then was what was a skill used. So you just had this challenge during your meal. What did you do to try to like get past that? So one example would be peer support. So your peers maybe helping encourage you. Another one would be distraction, so maybe the peers you're with are helping distract you from the thoughts of your food, the thoughts that you're having about it and such. Maybe you're watching TV, maybe you're reading a book, whatever. You're distracting yourself from your bad feelings and thoughts. And then another type of um, skill that you could use would be opposite action. So say you're having those thoughts, like say you have a thought like, I'm not eating another bite of this. Say that's your thought. The opposite action would be take a bite. So, you know, just doing the opposite of whatever your bad thought was. And again, there are so many different types of skills that you can use and there are so many different types of challenges you could have, but those are just a few examples. So the last thing we would say is what we were feeling. And I want to say that Feeling fat is not what we're looking for here when you're processing a meal. It's like, okay, you feel fat, but what do you really feel inside? Why are you feeling fat? You know, um, another thing we're not really looking for is I'm feeling full. That's like a physical sensation. Okay, sure, you're feeling full, but what, what is like the emotional underlying thing that you feel? So what are you truly feeling? feeling deep down inside, not your physical sensation, not your judgment of yourself, nothing like that. So you could say you're feeling guilty, you're feeling proud, you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling accomplished, you're feeling happy, you're feeling sad, you're feeling tired. Well, tired's kind of a physical thing, but you could be emotionally tired as well. Anyways, yeah. So those are like the four questions that you kind of go through when you're processing a meal. Those are the four that I went through that I found very helpful. So again, to wrap that up, that is what was your success of your meal? What was your challenge? What was your skill used? And then what was your feeling following the meal or snack? 
And so I just kind of want to wrap up this video with saying that after a meal or snack, after you've processed, you might still be feeling kind of yucky. You know, when you're in eating disorder recovery, meals and snacks can be very challenging and they can leave you feeling crappy and they can leave you feeling like you want to do something bad, like exercise. Well, you know what I mean? Exercise isn't bad, but like, you know what I mean? Um, exercise, purge, whatever it may be. So a really good idea if you're feeling those kinds of things is to then look for a positive coping skill that you can use to get yourself through those uncomfortable emotions. So something that you could do is read, watch TV. You could talk with a friend. You could talk with a family member. You could look for like a sensory toy, like a fidget spinner or like Play-Doh or put on some nice smelling lotion, something like that, you know? So after processing a meal, if you're still feeling not good, try a positive coping skill. And everybody's coping skills are different, but look for a positive one, okay? Like we're not here to process a meal and then go purge. So that is what meal processing can look like. Like I said, it can look different for other people. If you've got other things that it would be helpful for you to reflect on when you're processing a meal, feel free to do that. If you want to write it down, if you want to talk to a friend, if you want to talk to your um, significant other, whatever it may be, find a way to make meal processing work for you because just shoveling food down your throat is not going to cure you. You need to do more work. You need to do the emotional, the mental work also. I hope you all have a wonderful day, a wonderful night, whatever it may be. If you try this meal processing, feel free to leave down in the comments how it went. If you have suggestions for other things to think about during meal processing, feel free to leave that down below as well. And um, yeah, so have a wonderful life.